Okay, Ed, I've got things put together up here pretty good. Uh, I'm just going to go over a couple of points that uh, about running the engine. You want to know various things that are going on with it, I guess. Uh, there's grease points, you know, here and down here. I've got those all handled. Um, it's, of course, got forward and reverse on it, which you only need one direction on this, but it'll always be worth it to have a reverse on it. It makes it more usable. The pop-off valve is set up 90 pounds. It goes off about 95. Um, the oiler here, uh, you just put steam oil in the top of it. Just unscrew that. Put steam oil in there. I've got the valve set pretty good. Right about a quarter of a turn open. And this one also about a quarter of a turn open. And that gets enough steam in the hydrostatic lubricator to work. Uh, of course, these blowdown valves need to be open. This one and this one need to be open when you first start it up. And I'll do that later. Uh, the tricocks here are just, you know, that's just normal stuff. The very first thing you always want to do is make sure this is ha at least half full of water. That's your water level right in the boiler at least half full and you need to hold it at the, around that or a little bit less than that would be fine as well I wouldn't put much more than that in it because it just gets too time consuming to heat up the water uh, the manual pump works great I'll get that working later I'll just get my buckets going there That's uh, this is a airlock valve so when you first start it up you have this open and you start pumping and as soon as water comes out of here you close it up that gets the airlock out just plug a hose into here or drain when it's cooled off and there's a lot of oil points on the engine itself uh, down on the the eccentrics down there a little bit of oil will come out of the valve chamber here and come down and coat those eccentrics too. You don't need to worry about it too much, but I always oil them. And uh, these uh, parts up in here need to be oiled on a regular basis while it's running. And the alternator, I've worked on that to get that uh, going. I've got a battery here, although I'm not sending a battery along with it. It's just a matter of getting you getting a battery for it. Uh, this is kind of an old battery, and I don't think you want it. And it has a switch right here. A little toggle switch. Right there. And I'll show you how that works later, too. So, um, gauge and everything. Oh, the blower. Oh, that's the blower right there. And when you first, first put wood in, it's good to put, turn on the blower a little bit if you've got steam pressure. That's an engine outlet or another outlet if you want to use it for that. I don't see anything else, but if I think of something else. I, had, I ran the exhaust down, down here, down below. Um, at the very bottom down there, underneath it. Uh, I don't know where you want the exhaust to go, but you can replumb it to where, where, whatever your needs are. I think you said you wanted to run it through a radiator or something. So, it's getting uh, warmed up here. I, I, in the firebox, I just put a, a large piece of wood on the left side and right side and put my paper in the center and kindling in the center and and I go crosswise with wood and, and to get it going, to get a good draft. And the draft door here, I keep it open just an inch or so. Well, that's about it for now. Okay, so uh, we're up to about 90 something pounds. And the pop-off valve is ready to blow. I just wanted to show you that. I don't know when it's gonna blow though. Uh, pretty soon, so. So that's coming along, and it makes a lot of noise when it goes off. 
And I took the whistle off as you requested as well. You can always put one on on that one connection over there. And I've got the battery all hooked up. And it's been about an hour and a half, I guess, since I it was cold when I started it. Once you learn how to run the fire, and me too, uh, it, it will take less time to uh, get it heated up. And you don't have to have it up but where it pops off here. It's just, uh, I figured I'd show you that. You can run it at 45 pounds of pressure, too. Uh, and I've got the water pump going here. I'll kind of show you that. So, if, when you first start pumping it, you're going to get an airlock in it. Because this tube is, of course, dry. So you open this valve right there. And right away you start seeing water coming up the tube. And it'll start coming out the seal. And then you just close that off. And everything you're pumping now goes right into the boiler. I, want to, I don't want to put too much in there because it'll cool it down and then the pop-off valve won't go off. And it's only partially going off now. So I'm going to wait here a minute until it goes off. I'll be back. Well, it went off here, but um, it stopped so fast I couldn't get it. Anyway, the pop-off valve goes off fine. So, uh, let's see. We have the blower, which you can use occasionally if you want hear it and uh, it just when you put new wood in there sometimes I just you know kind of hope it to get that new wood going although that wood's been in there but you can tell the draft is incredible and you don't need to use it at all with it it's just it's something that times it nice and it's just this valve right up here and uh The engine. So I've got the tri the valves open on it, these two, because it's going to be water in there in the cylinder. Okay, so I got blew all the water out. Now I'm going to close them up. They'll get really hot, though. Okay. And just give it the crank a turn. switch down here in the frame that okay so right away it's starting to charge right now that battery you heard it slow down you can place the battery wherever you want but So now is the time to start managing that fire and making sure it's, you know, putting out as much heat as it's consuming in steam. And it's gone down a little bit. But once you learn how to manage that fire and the use of the steam, uh, it'll, uh, it'll keep up with it. That's one good thing about having the steam pressure up, up to the maximum amount. So view the video and give me a call if you have any questions. I'm pretty much done with it. I can't think of anything else. The only other thing, yeah, there was one other thing. This hand pump is going to, you know, you're going to have to be pumping water into it from the source. You know, and if you want a, um, 
a mechanical pump put on the engine, I could do that as well. I'd have to build everything for it. But it depends on what you want. And it costs, of course, cost. You know, the darn things are, I gotta build an eccentric for it and uh, the pump, of course, and put it all together. So that could run 500 bucks right there. So, anyway, let me know. Thanks. Okay, one other thing is you, uh, the switch down here, you push it away from you. So it's that one. And I'll turn up the steam up a little bit. RPM. Right away you hear it slow down. That means it's charging. And I put a bolt meter on here. After you go with it, the more that bolt meter, meter goes up. But you wouldn't need to run it that hard to get it to charge your battery. You know, here maybe is a good speed right here. Still charging, of course.